We'll start this uh, webinar in a uh, in a minute or so. Just uh, waiting for uh, everyone to get here. All right, let's go ahead. <clears throat> Welcome to our last uh, in our series of Expert Connects and topic, uh, the digital supply chain explained. We uh, hope you've enjoyed the series so far. My name is Ira Sager. I'm Vice President of Learning Initiatives for the Center for Global Enterprise. Uh, we tried something new with these, this series, 15-minute uh, uh, webinars over the last five weeks, uh, sharing key management skills for successful supply chain transformations. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed it, and uh, we think of this as espresso for the mind, short but uh, sessions, but packed with lots of information. Each session, and this one as well, uh, which will be on the topic of uh, risk and um, <clears throat> competitive advantage, uh, Vivek Galani, Manager of Research Programs and Analytics for Digital Supply Chain Institute, which is also an affiliate uh, of CGE, as uh, will lead this session as he had uh, all the other sessions. Uh, we hope after this uh, session, after uh, has presented his, uh, <clears throat> his slides, we have an opportunity for Q&A. Uh, if you have a question for Vivek, please use the Q&A function on Zoom to post a question. And if we don't have time uh, during, at the end of the session, we'll uh, respond by email. Thank you, and I'll turn it over to Vivek now. Thank you, Ira, for introduction. So welcome back, everyone. Um, today's session will talk about the digital supply chain's risk and uh, how um, you can turn that into a competitive advantage. Um, so those of who um, are new um, or joining for the first time um, today, um, over the last uh, four weeks, we talked about digital supply chain. So at Digital Supply Chain Institute, um, uh, we define digital supply chain as a customer-centric platform, and with the help of uh, 26 supply chain executives, we define, uh, we uh, divided uh, digital supply chain into four areas, demand, people, technology, and risk. So over the last three weeks, we talked about demand, people, and technology. And we'll jump into how um, uh, companies should manage risk uh, and what, what needs to be done in terms of turning that into a competitive advantage. And um, I'll give you our two examples on companies um, that are doing that right now. Um, so first, uh, let me get back to a basic process of understanding the risk management. I think it divides into three, uh, three steps, identify, assess, and manage. So I think all the supply chain leaders, and if you are uh, uh, studying in supply chain right now, I think you, sh you should think about uh, for any kind of process um, uh, within a supply chain or a company that you will work for, what are the risks uh, you will face um, um, uh, in a function or, and or, or as in a company. And then you should assess what are the probability of that happening um, and what are the ne negative impact in terms of loss of revenue or loss of a customer. Um, so you need to assess that. And once you assess it, I think the next step in the process is to manage it and put in controls uh, in place to make sure that doesn't happen again. And if it happens, it has a lower impact uh, on your business. And to give you a, a quick example on this one, and this may be probably an old example, but a BP gas oil leak, right? That was a really bad uh, disaster and risk to the BP, but the probability of that happening was really low. But if you, if you compare it to the compared probability of hitting um, anyone by lightning twice, it was higher than um, uh, um, oil leak was happening. And then, but then uh, because uh, that happened, I think they changed their whole research assessment to make sure that doesn't happen again. Um, so I think every company needs to make sure they understand the current risk, uh, future risk, and make sure uh, to put in controls um, to manage those. Um, so digital supply chain too, when we started four years ago, um, uh, I think every traditional, digital, uh, traditional supply chain has always been focused on compliance and regu regulatory uh, uh, risk. Um, but at DSA, we introduced a business performance risk because uh, when you talk about digital supply chain, it's all about connecting your customer, learning uh, from your customer, uh, getting visibility from end to end supply chain. So if you do that, uh, there are always risks in terms of on time delivery because if you don't deliver, you, um, your revenue goes lower, uh, you, you lose a customer, um, uh, business continuity. 
So if you look at business continuity, pandemic, uh, natural disaster, I think those are all now more important than ever in terms of how companies need to think that right now. And I think there are so many companies lagging in that terms um, and supply and demand matching. Um, right now, companies can't get the materials that they need right now because of they don't have visibility into their suppliers. So that is one of the risks. And we'll talk more about uh, supplier collaboration that is needed right now um, and how uh, you can turn that into competitive advantage. Um, uh, for product security, uh, we are working with uh, uh, one of our DSCA members and I'll give you an example of how they are thinking to turn product security into a competitive advantage. Um, so for compliance and regulatory risk, uh, labor, environment, and health, health and safety is more important now than ever, right? Uh, com uh, in China, if you look at um, labor compliance is, uh, is more important right now. Health and safety of any individual in any organization right now is more than happy. More companies are now trying to do uh, testing at the uh, job location right now as um, most of the organization are opening uh, and going back to the offices. Um, if you look at human trafficking, uh, conflict of minerals and corruption, um, is it, always is it, is always a risk uh, when you try to do a, a global supply chain. So definitely, I think companies need to think about that. And then we have data data privacy, IT, and cybersecurity. Um, so cybersecurity is an overall. Uh, so when you look at the the last three uh, compliance or regulatory issues, cybersecurity is an overall framework. But within that. You have data privacy and IP protection. Um, and I'll give you a quick example on cybersecurity and why it is more important now than ever. Um, so um, uh, if you all remember in, I think, 2014, um, there was a hack um, at Sony. And this is an example um, uh, from um, uh, from George Bailey, who is our managing uh, uh, executive director and chief research officer. Um, and while he was working uh, uh, and, and leading the Sony, uh, um, so Sony, um, there was a hack because um, the Sony system was so siloed, uh, hackers couldn't get through uh, many systems and couldn't get access to the system. But now, as you talked about digital supply chain uh, and always talk about connected systems within your company, but also with your supply and customer and end-to-end -end supply chain, I think cybersecurity is more um, important now than ever. The other thing that um, I think uh, you need to think about while you manage the cybersecurity is that uh, I know companies always talk about putting more and more firewalls uh, throughout the system and putting redundancy throughout the system, but that doesn't have in all the cases, just because sometimes if you do that, uh, you have thousands of suppliers that you share data with through your SAP system or any other ERP system. And it just discourages people to share the data because it is so hard for them to uh, get access to because you have so many firewalls in place. So how do you manage those and make sure that uh, while you have a security, you also have a proper uh, access um, uh, to your suppliers or your supplier have proper access to your system. Um, but you, um, uh, to do that, I think uh, you also need to um, train your suppliers and uh, your customers in terms of, uh, there are two, um, I'll give you two example of um, hacks uh, that, um, that went through their suppliers or their vendor partners. So for Target, I think it was their AC suppliers. So one of their employees got an email and through that email, they got access to the Target target servers. And for another example, for Quest Diagnostic, it was the tier two suppliers, they got access to them. So while it is important to keep in touch with your suppliers, it's also important for you to make sure that your suppliers, tier one or tier two or tier three suppliers, are on the same level of cybersecurity as you are, but also the employees are at those companies are also also have training to make sure that they are following the proper cybersecurity protocols. So next, um, we did um, a, a quick survey um, um, of supply chain executives leaders across the world, and we asked them what are the top five supply chain risks. Uh, for them and top um, uh, supplier performance was really the first one. And uh, some of, uh, and while it is the biggest risk for them, it is also um, a really a competitive advantage. So if you can 
um, uh, while connect your system with suppliers and share data and you can analyze your contracts with them over the five, five years or any kind of historic data you have on the contract. I think you can really turn that into a competitive advantage by uh, negotiating with them in terms of they're not delivering it on time or, or what is the delivery ratio compared to the pricing that you are offering them. Next is data integration and analysis, uh, matching supply with demand. Matching supply with demand is right now more important. And I think in demand section, we talk about demand sensing. So not just you are just matching it, but um, uh, I think sensing that demand and then um, matching that demand as well is more important now. Um, so let me go to the next slide. So le let me give you a quick quote uh, from uh, uh, Chain IQ is one of the DSCA members. Um, um, so from uh, uh, Dr. Urs da uh, Dagula, he's the CEO at Chain IQ, and he thinks that uh, comply, compliance and a positive brand impact is an opportunity. And I think every company should make sure uh, uh, that they are not losing any business because of a pro potential brand damage. Um, and I think we also talked about brand image um, in our talent session. So I think overall, if you uh, if if you really work on a brand image, I think it can also help you in terms of gaining new uh, talent which is also tech savvy and make sure, or train into cybersecurity, or they have some kind of training in it. But it also help you um, uh, secure your digital supply chain platform moving forward. Moving forward. So what does a good supply, uh, um, what does good look like uh, in this? So at BSA, we have uh, put together a risk, uh, risk maturity assessment. And if you go through that assessment, if you're using your data to reduce the business performance and compliance risk uh, uh, through predictive analytics, I think that can be a really good maturity level. So at DSA, we have uh, three levels of maturity levels, and this is the third level of maturity where you use the data uh, for, for predictive analysis, uh, specific focus on cybersecurity and data protection, and strategically segment the risk of what to manage and where to gain a competitive advantage. So let me give you a quick example on, on how to turn risk um, uh, into opportunity. And the first one is around product security. So one of our, uh, we are uh, at DSA, we are working with one of our, our members who are a logistic company right now. And we are trying to see how, uh, and they are, uh, they are losing business uh, because they are dealing through uh, containers and they are losing some of the products when a uh, container is in, is in transit. So we are trying to figure out how we can analyze the container while it leaves a particular a particular shape and then which which is another destination. How you can analyze, uh, not actually uh, inspect the product itself, but uh, from the outside of vendor, if you can identify a tampering of uh, of the container or not. Um, and what they really want to do is once you identify an overall solution, which is cheap. Uh, in, in terms of other um, uh, ERP solution that uh, like SAP or Oracle is providing, turning that uh, into a business solution that they can provide to other uh, other um, companies in the area. So I, I think every company can easily identify a problem that they can they really want to solve or a problem they have already solved, and how to turn that um, how to turn that into uh, into a competitive advantage. Um, so I think uh, when you uh, when you uh, join any supply chain company, you definitely make sure that um, the I think there are two things you need to make sure. First is really simple is about identify, assess, and manage. It is a simple risk management process. But the second is you need to identify what are the risks you want to mitigate, but then what are the risks that you can definitely turn um, into a competitive advantage. Um, so with that, I'll hand it back um, um, to Ira for um, um, any Q and A. Thanks, Vivek. Uh, just have a quick question. I uh, want to talk a little bit about, obviously, the pandemic uh, we're, uh, we're in right now. And how does that change, um, from your point of view, uh, risk assessment and management? And what kind of competitive advantages does that um, provide? Or how do companies change to leverage uh, whatever competitive advantage they can gain out of a, a pandemic? So, so uh, I, it's, it's a great question, and I think it really connects to the supplier collaboration side that we talked about. Um, so uh, I think, as most of you know, most of the companies are really struggling with getting materials from their suppliers because 
um, for some uh, some companies, they have a uh, um, sole source suppliers, if you call it, or, or, or just one supplier for a particular product or a part of the product, um, and they are really struggling with that. Um, and uh, and then what companies are doing right now is trying um, to understand if they can have multiple suppliers while not increasing the cost. They're trying different scenarios um, uh, and make sure that they have a a footprint um, uh, in their supply, uh, supplier network to make sure they always have a product in time. Now, what does um, uh, co competitor, how competitive advantage take part into that? Uh, for example, if you have one supplier in China and one supplier in India and there is some event in India that um, your suppliers cannot provide, then um, a supplier in China gets activated at the time and then you get the product on time at all. So what it does, it, it helps you gain market share um, uh, I can't uh, uh, give you the name, but there was a um, uh, one of the DSA member company um, that is really trying, and they really gained market uh, market share. I think it was around 20% just by analyzing the supply risk that they have and their supply footprint they have, and then expanding it um, um, and creating redundancy into their suppliers. Um, uh, so in terms of if we don't get the supplies from this, these are the next level and they have contracts in place to make sure that they get uh, they get proper access when they need it and also um, how for example if a particular market uh, doesn't get a particular product in time how you can deliver those products even if it's in it's not your market um, so i think uh, having the um, analyzing those kind of risk uh, and opportunities um, uh, really helps the company gain a uh, competitive advantage very good well, we hope you've enjoyed this, uh, this series, and uh, you can see all the recordings on our YouTube. Uh, this one will join the others. We'll post this shortly. And uh, I want to thank Vivek and, and our audience. Vivek, I don't know if you want some final, add some final words to this. No, uh, I, I'll just say, so thank you everyone for joining and we are always happy um, to talk about any of the supply, digital supply chain topic that you, you are interested of and you are uh, studying or working on right now. Uh, so please feel free to reach out to us at any time and we'll be um, happy to have a talk. Very good. Thank you. Yeah.